Hey guys and welcome to the official Alpha 19 release notes. They just popped up, unbelievable. I was just refreshing the browser, the forums, and there they are. This is fresh, very freshly coming in now. Hey survivors, we're proud to announce that the Alpha 19 streamer weekend is finally here. We will be running the streamer weekend event from Friday, June 26, starting at 12 p.m. CST through Sunday, June 28th. Now, that means for me personally, I will probably be starting the stream at four o'clock in the morning or something, because I think 9 p.m. CST is two o'clock in the morning for me. So 3 p.m. CST would be about five o'clock. So I will get up early and we will start streaming as soon as we can. And it will go all the way through to Sunday. But let's have a look at these very juicy release notes. Now, some of the things when they get very technically, they don't mean much to me, but we're gonna go through them anyway. And you guys in the comments, please feel free to fill in the gaps on anything that like these things, for example, then uh, to explain them in the comments. Official Alpha 19 release notes, linear color space lighting. Alpha 19 has gotten a huge visual upgrade with the switch to linear color space lighting. We have finally achieved full PBR physical based rendering and all of the art has been adjusted to look better and compatible with it. Normal maps look better, bright lights don't wash out of the scene and so much more. It is hard to describe why it looks better, you have to play it to see it for yourself. The video option to adjust gamma has been changed to brightness so it works with the new lightning. It also has more balanced range or, uh, of darker to lighter adjustments. Lights now use a priority system, so close lights are updated rapidly to reduce visible jumps in their intensity and range. So I'm assuming then the further they're away, they're not. Now, a lot of that means very little to me from an, uh, uh, that I don't understand it from a technical point of view, but I'm assuming the gist of it is that things will look better. They will just look fuller, that lights, lights look more spread out and more natural, most likely. And we've I've seen some of the streams in and out that the devs were ha having, and it does. The new Gamma looked actually really good. I was watching one last night, and um, one of the guys adjusted the Gamma, and it didn't start looking like this bright, washed-out screen. It actually looked like it became daylight. Like, like it was much, much better looking. Uh, than it does currently in Alpha 18. Interactive loading screens. We added a brand new interactive loading screen with over 200, uh, with over 20 tooltips on how to play the game from basic to advanced. The user can cycle back and forth through them and learn how to play the game. Better while it's loading, it also looks better with new HD screenshot backgrounds. Now that is actually really good, I like that. Um, the tooltips, a lot of games do that, and I'm really a big fan of that, you know, because every time you wait for loading and you see these tips, you go, oh, I didn't know you can do that. That's always really nice. Improved gamepad support. Okay, I don't use a gamepad, so for you gamepad enthusiasts might make a difference. We have, com com we have combed through all gamepad functions, making sure everything is up to date and working. And we also improved defaults like for driving. Additionally, we added a new reverse directions for block rotation placement. That is really nice. I didn't know that there was nothing on the gamepad. I know they had the shift and the um, R and shift R or something like on the keyboard. So that always was a thing, which is really, really nice. Then we have the critical survival system. Now, this is something I'm really excited about because I just don't know exactly how it works. I can't imagine exactly how it works, but I do like the sound of it. We got the, the old ISS or interactive survival system that blackened and clamped your health and stamina bars from filling because it was confusing to players. We replaced it with an all new critical system. All critical injuries that blacken or clamp your max health or stamina will be caused by a new critical buff in the left of the screen. This new critical buff are clickable. Oh, the buffs are clickable, that's nice. Taking the player directly to the player status effect screen where you can read about the problem and its cure. When you are at full health, a zombie can never cause a critical on the first hit. So we don't want to hear about unfair crits. Oh, that, that's actually really good. Once you take a few hits or get reckless in close combat, the chances increase. Being at low health also increases the chance of receiving a critical armor, re uh, a critical armor reduces this by a chance by a flat amount, creating a buffer that enemies most, uh, must overcome before they can hit you with criticals. Some criticals are incremental. A sprained arm makes you vulnerable to getting a broken arm. 
Some injuries don't take kindly to being ignored. Sprinting or jumping with a broken leg will not work in your favor. If an injury is affected by an action like then the buff icon will blink and br will blink briefly and you will know that something happened. So I do like that they're trying to balance things more like, you know, make armor worthwhile because I have done plenty of runs where I just didn't care about armor. I just didn't see the benefit. All I saw was, hey, I'm slowing down, so I'm not going to wear armor until my stamina system is peaked at, uh, or topped up to the max where I don't lose as much stamina. And then I'm wearing armor, which gives me stamina penalties. So I really like that this is now... Um, much more um, obvious stated, armor reduces the chance by a flat amount. I hope you can see that flat amount because a lot of times we don't see the numbers actually working well together with all the stats right now in Alpha 18. So you look at something, you put the armor on, nothing much changes in some of the stats and you don't really know exactly, okay, I have 12 armor compared to 9 armor. What does it actually change? What, what is now actually the difference when I have 3 or 4 extra armor? So I hope there will be more... Um, transparency on what these different stats actually do to you as a character. New and reworked critical injuries include abrasions, the most common injury that you get in fights, they cause no additional problems. Sprained or broken arms lowers your swing speed and decreases your reload speed and weapon handling. The cure for a broken arm is a splint which lowers the time for healing. Power attacks or ranged attacks increase the time needed to heal it. Okay, so power attacks or range attacks. Okay, I get that. Yeah, so when we pull back a bow, it would make sense. You use your arm. When you hold a gun, though, I suppose you're still, yes, you're still holding your arm. Okay, that, that makes sense in a way. I just hope it's not going to be OTT so you become completely useless because we all know Horde Knight, you get attacked, get a little bit of damage, and then all of a sudden you get so gimped, you might as well just stand still and let yourself being killed. So I hope it's still going to be in a way that you feel like it's worth it to try to survive. Sprained or broken leg lowers your mobility and jump height. You can get sprained or broken leg in, in a melee fight or when jumping from heights. The cure for broken leg is a splint which lowers the time for healing. Jumping, failing, uh, falling or sprinting increases the time needed to heal. Makes sense. Deep lacerations, making you more vulnerable to receiving bleeding criticals. Oh wow, bleeding criticals. They are cured by a first aid or sewing kit. Concussions. Taking more hits while being stoned can cause a concussion. It periodically causes a stone effect and it's cured by painkillers. Infections. Infection is not something that enemies cause directly. Any critical hit has a chance to cause an infection. An infection is completely harmless and will even heal on its own until it reaches 5%. At that point, it starts getting worse and you need medication to cure it. While you have an infection, any hit you take will make it worse. That kind of makes sense that any hit you take will make it worse though is again kind of putting you in a situation if you're in the middle of clearing a house and you got hit and you're now at the 5-6% you're trying to escape this house and say you're on top of that have a sprained leg you will probably end up in a scenario where you think well I, I'm just better off dead. <laughs> So, but anyway, that's just my uh, trail of thought. So I really hope that they balance it nicely so that you really have a lot of fun trying to escape the clutches of infection and death. Food and water bars. We've added food and water bars under the player's belt. Inventory blue for water level and green for food level. You will see them go up and down based on your current hunger level. HD characters. We have overhauled and re -im imaged Reimagine many of the characters in HD. They may look better, but they have less draws uh, calls and are slightly better in performance. Okay, so less draw calls. Okay, I get you now. Yeah, and performance new HD zombies include. So they have Aline, Darlene, Marlene, Bo, Joe, Mo, Yo, Steve, um, Big Mama, of course, the Crawler, Trader Jen, Trader Joel, and Player Arms, male and female, uh, male and female. Very good. Dynamic music system. Um, that means very little to me because I always have music off because a lot of times the music of Seven Days to Die is awesome But it also gets copyright claimed a lot by random people. So we usually have it off But TFP have gained uh, have again teamed up with Native Darkness Productions to make the Alpha 19 dynamic music system more robust While adding a ton of new content and features the proprietary dynamic music system algorithm measures and uses many uh, player-centric 
conditions such as player location, biome, time of day, inside or outside a location nearby aggressive enemies, threat level and more tailor. I can't wait to try that out though. That, that sounds really awesome. From this dynamic music system, algorithms the system can play from the following music groups. Home day, home night, exploration, suspense, combat, music, uh, custom trader, music for each trader. Exploration, suspense and combat are procedurally generated, providing a complete musical arrangement from a set of interchangeable loops. As of Alpha 19, there are 31,558 unique companies. That makes it worth to at least try to have it on and I really hope YouTube is not gonna hit a spa on that because I really love uh, when music is really timed nicely and you get in the moment, it's just really awesome. Uh, we are very excited to unveil the system. We hope you enjoy it. I really hope so too. Loot and enemy progression balance. Enemy progression has been rebalanced. The chosen game difficulty no longer affects the game stage value and player parties accumulate roughly two third of the combined game stage that they used to. Loot distribution has been smoothed out so that you do not find end game loot too soon and have no more upgrades to look forward to. That's really nice. I like that. I mean, it's always awesome when you find this, you know, quality six because of all your perks, like, you know, a shotgun, it's really nice, but I do really like that the game itself kind of paces you as well, so you can't go absolutely crazy. Loot has been balanced to provide a smooth progression from primitive iron and steel items. This change provides a steady progression for the player and gives some incentive to craft while slowing the economy a bit early game. The loot quality for player parties is equivalent to that of the highest level player and perks effects like Lucky Looter are not shared. The only loot advantage is that parties face tougher opponents which have a higher chance to drop loot of better quality. I like that. So if I'm not misunderstanding that, tougher enemies, better loot. Okay, I like that. There are four tech levels of items in the game. These start appearing in loot at, a, at following game stage intervals. Game stage 1 to 11 is tech 0. Primitive tools, weapons and armor include a bow and the blunderbuss. Game stage 12, iron and similar melee items and armor and the first proper firearms like a pistol or double barrel shotgun. GS50 is tech 2, the best melee items, bows and armor and mid-range firearms like pump action shotguns. The most advanced firearms like an M60 or sniper rifle. I love it. Trader quest reward scale similar to this system. You won't immediately get a shotgun for a day one quest. We will be continuing to fine tune loot progression in patches. In the future, we plan on unifying loot progression, quest loot, reward progression, trader for sale item progression more unified. That actually makes sense. That unification of loot progression once they have it nailed down makes sense. I mean, theoretically, yes, you shouldn't be able to go to a trader and buy that maxed out level weapon, you know, but you can't find it and you're on game stage one, it makes sense to also have the same kind of uh, loot available from a trader. I do kind of like that. That's very cool. On screen sprite, sprite system. We added a brand new nav object on screen sprite system to help players more easily locate important items in the world such as fetch quest containers, player backpacks, spears, yes, and more. We're using the system on many of the harder to find important items and events in the game. I like it. The new nav objects on screen sprite system, which governs the on screen icons, compass icons, and map icons. These functions are easily configured in the XML and allow adding custom nav objects for entities. Nice quest objectives and items for those who enjoy modding the game. Guys, I, I, I know vanilla will be better. I have a feeling what I'm reading so far that the gameplay will be more balanced and fun in Alpha 19 than Alpha 18. Don't quote me on that. It's just what it sounds like that it will be more fun. However, as always, I can't wait to see what the modders come up with. Giving the modders straight away the freedom to play around with these things is just unbelievably awesome by the devs. Some of the items that are using the nav objects on screen sprite system, rally markers, fetch objectives, player backpacks, bedrolls, owned vehicles, traders, thrown spears, airdrops. Lovely. Quest improvements. We have improved many of the quest types and even added new quests. Thank you for adding new quests. There are some of the improvements. Quest sprites. We have implemented the on-screen sprite markers for rally markers, traders fetch big bags, dig quests, and more, making it much easier for players to go where they need to go and find. Talking about quests, I don't know if they're going to touch on that. I really, really hope that trader quests will not be any more 5,000 miles away from the trader if there's a town right beside the trader. It makes no sense to me. I mean, you're day one. You want to get uh, to clear the first house, you know, to get some zombies and the quest is like two kilometers away. I'm not gonna run.
one, two kilometers away. I've got to stay in this town. So I end up basically not wanting to do the quest. I'm going to see if they mention that, but I hope they refined that as well. The dick quests have been improved, displaying a projected image of a dotted circle. I'm really excited for that. I haven't seen it, but I heard people talk about it. People left comments as well on other videos about it. It sounds really awesome. Onto the terrain showing the player where to dig. As the player digs out terrain blocks, the projected circle shrinks, letting the player know he's getting closer to the buried treasure. Opening routes, we have added new trader to trader quests that guide the player to the next closest trader after completing 10 quests. This continues until the player has delivered a package to all five traders. World and location updates. We added a ton of new remnant locations to the game. So there are lots of smaller low enemy count locations to explore. Loot and take over if you're not ready for a tier challenge. Oh, I like that. We have accepted Navis gain significant. Oh, we have updated Navis gain significantly, increasing the playable space in the radiated zone. With new roads that lead to new developments, adding many new POIs or locations that were never in Navis game before. Or updating cities. Locations include oh nice new desert business development snow modern development forest old housing desert modern housing desert old housing desert city of departure snow city of Parishton, wasteland city of gravestone uh, gravestown some trader locations in naviskin have been moved to improve distance between traders i love it i actually I i'm looking forward to play naviskin as well Especially after they're making changes to it, because I always like to see how you know the the, the handcrafted maps work. Because you would like to, to think that obviously the handcrafted stuff is the most balanced, you know. And I really I like to always try another skin at least once for each alpha. We have improved random gen in alpha 19 to use every POI possible in the game, so players will see the breath. The breadth, the breadth of content like never before, along with a lot of tagging, updates, and improvements. In fact, an A19 random world can have over 500 unique POIs. Awesome. We imagine tons of older locations with a complete art and gameplay overhaul, converting them to beautiful and questable dungeon experiences and added many brand new locations to the game. In all over 40 new or updated locations, and counting. Some of the new or re-imagined locations include grocery stores, gun stores, pharmacies, hardware stores, clothing stores, electronic stores, ranger stations, ranger stations. I'm really looking forward to them. Carlet underscore zero one. Okay, so well, house modern. Okay, these are just the, the file names now of the houses or the um, names in the XML files. 12 remnants. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. Sounds really awesome though. Okay, here's some changes and some fixes, which I'm assuming refer to um, Navis gain specifically maybe, or to some specific POIs. Um, light intensity correction to all POIs work better with the new linear lightning. Wasteland biomes now spawn smaller but improved deco remnants. So this is kind of just some generic stuff and then renamed bank store. Okay, so you guys can pause this and go through this. A lot of that is very specific and to specific POIs or maybe even locations in Navis gain, like removed alleys uh, from Gravestown, improved Gravestown's uh, overall look, optimized Diaville City a little and fixes such as wrong bookcases in the bank. I wouldn't even know about these things. I probably would have walked past this 100 times if that's in a POI that is in random gen and never noticed it. So very good, I like that. Environmental art. The art has grown much bigger and have made some major improvements, including snow trees, updated to resemble thick fir trees with 3D snow giving the trees more depth and volume. I love my snow trees, they're my favorite. Burnt trees, thin version that has charred bark in addition to being more permanent, uh, performant. A thicker, crispy, fried, fir tree that adds more atmosphere and variety that I like. New skies, updated sun and moon rendering, cloud pending and lighting and horizon blending. Uh, horizon blending. New fog uses a new distance calculation allows for very dense fog and sun punch through of heavy fog. Fog now switches to a murky version when underwater. Updated textures. Most environment textures have been updated in addition to adjustments for linear color space and physical based rendering. Commercial stores. All new commercial store POIs, props and loot containers, quests through ransack grocery store shelves, have your pick of rotten produce, peruse clothing stores with the la latest fashion and catch up on the best seller at the local bookstore. Shop till you drop for all your post-apocalyptic retail needs. Nearly 150 new commercial assets including. Okay, you guys can pause this and go through all of them. But nearly 150 new commercial assets. Very, very cool. 
Now, new weapons and items. This is now where the juicy juice comes in. We added several new tools and weapons. Tech level three, we added a whole new line of weapons to give you the firepower you will need to face future special infected bandits and more, yes. Desert Vulture. This 44 Magnum caliber pistol packs some serious stopping power and is governed by the gunslinger skill. Automatic shotgun. This new tank level, like the combat shotgun in uh, Darkness Falls. I really love the different type of shotguns. Automatic shotgun. This new tank level 3 firearm sports a large drone magazine and allows use of the trigger group automatic mod to unlock full automatic weapon. Fire mod mode makes it the most devastating short range gun shotgun in the game. If you like to see limbless zombies and superior crown control, this is <laughs> this is the weapon for you. Oh, you speak in my language, man. Sniper rifle. This is the 7.62 sniper rifle. Has a larger magazine, fire rate, better handling, and superior damage to the hunting rifle and marksman rifle. Impact driver. This tech level 3 tool is the fastest way to harvest mechanical items. Strip down cars and mechanical items down in seconds. That actually, I wonder, is it now balanced that... Um, tools no longer give you specific items like when I think at this point um, I think in Manila as well if you use a steel pickaxe fully modded you actually get more items than with a wrench so um, I don't know if that was a modded thing but I think it was Manila as well so I hope they actually balance that as well tech level one robotic sledge this robotic weapon is a stationary turret with a large sledgehammer shaped pulverizing arm that punches enemies and can knock them down easier at higher quality levels it is governed by robotics Ah, that's nice I like that plunderbus uh, not a new weapon but with the loot rebalancing this weapon might save your skin early game and is craftable from basic components yes all existing tools and weapons have either been renamed or remade from scratch or had an art update to PBR textures for the new linear lighting. New candy. This is awesome as well, actually. Some of the candies giving you buffs and all that. We have added candy to the vending machines. They allow players to have a short-term modification to gameplay and provide a few calories. Atom Junkie. Covert Cats. Eye Candy. Hackers. Healthy Bar. Jailbreakers. Nerd Tats. <laughs> um, oh shit drops, book, uh, rock buster, skull crusher, sugar bots. They reach from anything to dealing 50% more sneak damage, explosive damage, 100% success, uh, success chance to pick a lock. I love that. This is going to be my favorite. And uh, channel your inner nerd power stone buttons. Okay, this is awesome. You can pause it here to get all the details and all the different candies, but I'm really liking this that you get these little buffs, like, you know, when you crush a little candy. And I hope they're stuck really high, you know, that you can take a few for very specific loot runs or raids. New perk books. We've added three new book sets. Bar Brawler, Spear Hunter, and Tech Junkie. Nice. Bar Brawler. Basic moves. Adds 10% damage, drop a bomb, sprinting power attacks can knock down your opponent. I love sprinting power attacks. Killer Instinct, gain five, actually jumping attacks, you know, like jumping in the air, landing, crush that skull. Killer Instinct, gain 5% damage with each kill up to 15. Finishing moves, do extra damage to knock down opponents. Adrenaline healing, recover extra health with each punch. Oh man, we're gonna have to try a punch build then. Rage mod, attack and move faster after getting hit. Drinking beer no longer blurs your vision and your bulls last twice as long. Thank you. The seventh curse, the seventh unarmed strike in a short time deals 300 damage. They're basically asking for us to try out the melee build now. That is awesome. Spear hunter, damage, deal 10% more damage. Maintenance, spears degrade 20% slower. St steel spears, craft steel, spears, strong arms, spears travel faster and further. Rapid strike, thrust spears 10% faster. Punctured long, slows your target, deadly combo hits scored in quick succession do 10% more damage up to 30 killer move or kill move power attacks to downed opponents do 50% more damage tech junkie robotic damage robotics 10% more damage maintenance robotic weapons degrade 20% slower AP ammo craft AP ammo for robotic weapons robotic turret shells craft shotgun ammo for robotics stone repulsor craft this mod that sends enemies flying on charged hits love it charge strike increased chance to get an instant charge strike hydraulics increase the fire rate of robotic weapons and bulk crafting craft all robotic robotic ammo in a bulk. I like that. This is really, really nice. And um, perk balance. We have restructured existing perks and removed others to auxiliary perks don't always have five ranks. Others, so auxiliary perks don't always have five ranks, okay? As well as reduced some attribute requirements for auxiliary perks. What is an auxiliary perk? This was changed to give less desirable perks for bang for more bang for the buck. Okay, so this is the perk changes. Perception perks, lock picking. The infiltrator, animal tracker now only have three ranks. The penetrator has four ranks instead of five. Lock picking. 
Animal Tracker now only Sri Lanks. Okay, so lockpicking Sri Lanks. I hope lockpicking actually makes a difference now. Because I think at this point, lockpicking was broken in a way that, yeah, you were able to craft more or faster or something with each perk level, but you actually still could lose 20 lockpicks on a chest pff, because it would just break if you had bad RNG. The Penetrator has four ranks instead of five. The treasure hunting ability of, uh, of Lucky Looter that reduced the dick radius has now been removed from Lucky Looter in its own rank perk that reduces the new treasure hunting radius ring okay but is that radius ring not getting smaller anyway when you're getting closer so okay yeah we're gonna have to see that in practice to see what that looks like strength perks sexy sexy saurus has four ranks instead of five heavy armor was moved from fortitude to strength okay and now only has four ranks Fortitude uh, perks. Well insulated, living of the land, and rule one cardio now only have three ranks. Healing factor is nerfed, but still quite powerful, and now heals the new critical injuries faster with each rank. I like that. Agility perks. Run and gun, flurry of blows now only have three ranks. Light armor and parkour now only have four ranks. Intellect perk changes. The daring adventurer, charismatic nature, and physician now have four ranks. Yes, yeah, science is removed, and its perks are merged with various other perks. Okay. Okay, that's uh, that's something I'm gonna be very interested in um, checking out. AI improvements. Enemy breakthrough system. We've added a new enemy breakthrough system that gives enemies random animation probabilities when enter the scene after breaking through a door, two meter opening or monster closet. These entrance, entrances improve the overall immersion and break the normal cadence of gameplay improving the combat. Entrance include ragdoll entrance, the enemy will ragdoll through the opening and then get up. Stubble entrance, the enemy will stubble through, stubble or stumble through the opening before pursuing the player. I don't I, I think that's supposed to be stumble. I, I, don't, I don't know what stumble could mean otherwise. Long, uh, lo, lo, lunge, post, uh, boost entrance. The enemy will launch, uh, launch and post a uh, boost through the opening towards. Oh, okay, yeah, like a boost attack. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Enemy fall down system. We have added a new enemy fall down system that gives enemies random animation probabilities. Oh, okay. If they fall from heights uh, two meters or more, the entrance improves the overall immersion and break. Yeah, of course. Fall down ragdoll, my favorite. The enemy will ragdoll after landing and then get up. Um, stubble entrance. The enemies will stubble after landing before pursuing. Okay. Explain to me what stubble is. I, I really thought it meant stumble. Uh, launch uh, post uh, boost entrance. Uh, the enemy will launch, lo launch and boost after landing towards the player. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Enemy pain stun lock. AI pain resistance has been improved. It still builds up over time, but it has been adjusted to be harder to stun lock enemies. We fixed pain reactions, not always triggering. Pain now uses a new hit blending system, so different strength and duration of pain are shown and can happen while AI is attacking. Okay. That is going to be interesting to watch. Okay, we'll see. Head tracking. We've added head tracking to zombies, NPCs and animals. They will now turn their heads to look at their target. I like that. Because sometimes there's a, 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 a zombie actually aware of you, but for some reason, because of pathing or whatnot, it's not directly following you yet. But if you actually could see its face turn at you, that is so much better. Like I think straight away giving you warning signals. Enemy and animal swimming. Zombies and animals are able to swim in water. Zombies can swim? Really? Animals I can understand, but zombies? They're moving forward, so be careful. Zombies and the bear now have swimmer. Yeah, I'm not sure what to make of zombies being swim, uh, swimming. I don't think I'm a big fan of that idea. Zombies should just walk into the water and keep walking on the ground as fast as possible. Absolutely, they should be uh, very fast. But I don't like the idea of them swimming. That means they're perfectly aware that they're in water. That makes them very intelligent. Um, air pathing still generally follows the bottom of a body of water. Oh, but when they're near their destination, they can can, can swim upwards. Okay, that makes actually sense. So I'm, I'm going to take most of it back what I just said. I'm still not a fan of zombies being able to swim. But if it's more in the, in the, in the context of they walk, see you, and then they're just basically trying to grab you, hence they're swimming up, that actually sounds much better. Okay. Um, added AI that fall when target above unreachable. Okay, I'm not gonna go through all the added things. Yeah, you guys can pause it and have a look at all the added things. So we're gonna start here and I'm gonna go through a few of them that I just spot here. Bear swimming animations. Um, 
partial path picking may choose lower paths if lower AI intelligence and less dumb AI will pick higher paths over time. Blood Moon Spawner will instead spawn a radiated vulture 50% of the time if the target is in a vehicle. They really hate vehicles, those vultures. <laughs> Blood Moon Zombies have an increased loot drop rate after every X have spawned. Oh, I like that. So we're gonna set it to 64. <laughs> Blood Moon Vultures chase vehicles at 250% speed. Wow, so no more running away from the horde, I guess. Vultures can now attack blocks when chasing their prey. Zombie hits are triggered by anim animated hit events, um, fat zombie attacks animated. So this is really cool. As I said, you can uh, pause it here and just go through them at your own leisure. Changed, again, some of the changes, um, base damage to 40, aggressive animals in the forest only spawn at night. Okay, that makes sense. Dire Wolf now shares assets with regular wolf and uses new scale code instead of scaled prefab. Okay, removed old wolf. Uh, so that means it's the same wolf, just bigger? Okay. I, I, I can I can I can see that. Attack speed anime oh vultures. Just just take them all out. <laughs> so if you want to have a look here at the changes, just pause it for yourself and uh, go through it. And the same with the fixes. We're not gonna go through every single fix here. Alright, here we go. Random gen improvements. Random world generation has undergone a few changes to improve generation. Biome generation. We have made biomes random in placement and size to allow for less predictable layouts. Trader world placement. Trader world placements uh, was separated from regular wilderness POI placements, so it could be more predictable. Um, player spawns. I think we saw a trader in a town in one of the um, streams, I think. I'm not sure if that was a trader or just a PR that looked like one. But traders in town would make a lot of sense uh, as well. Player spawns. Initial player spawns were changed to make starting out easier for new players. I love it. POI distribution. We have improved random gen in to use every POI possible in the game so players will see the breadth of content like never before. Random worlds can now have over 500 unique POIs that can spawn. Animation improvements. Added rigs. Okay, so that is just general animation for your guns, um, for your falling and your landing. And third person. Oh, updated third person locomotion lower body. Okay, that's interesting. I never play multiplayer really, so I don't know what other characters uh, looked as much before, but I know they, were, they looked pretty static in places. Dynamic resolution. A dynamic resolution system has been added that allows the game to draw third graphics at a lower resolution than the main game window is running at. This can increase FPS while allowing the UI to run at full resolution. Dynamic resolution is disabled by default. It can be enabled in the display tab of video options. There are three settings, off, auto, and scale enables it at a fixed resolution, useful if you're trying to hit a specific FPS value like 60 and prefer constant resolution. I like that part specifically. This uses less video memory than auto. Dynamic resolution, minimum FPS, dynamic resolution scale. Lowering your screen resolution will only increase FPS if your video card is the bottleneck. If it's the CPU, the bottleneck, then um, it will not increase the FPS. Makes sense. Vehicles, here we go. We have done a number of improvements to vehicles listed below. They're added. Vehicle collisions and entities using their mass ratio and hit angle for damage, velocity reduction and ragdoll threshold chance. I like the ragdolls. I mean, there's nothing more fun than driving at high speeds through a group of zombies and see them all bounce through the air. Vehicle collisions with entities during Blood Moon slows vehicle and is harder to ragdoll. Okay, makes sense. You know, the tougher enemies. Vehicle damage by entities during Blood Moon slows and pushes vehicle. Vehicle cosmetic slot that adapts, uh, accepts die. This is not functional. No, and will be used for some type of modding in the future. But I really like it. I mean, it means modders theoretically could potentially already do something with that. Players ex 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 exiting vehicles retain most velocity. Vehicles keep full velocity when driver exits and no wheel on the ground. Vehicle driving increases food... What? Vehicle driving increases food consumption. What? On a bicycle, yeah. But in a car? Huh? Okay. Unless I'm misunderstanding that, I apologize if I'm misunderstanding that, but if it, it literally means that you will get hungry faster sitting in a car, then I don't know if I'm a big fan of that. But um, on a bicycle, I can understand. You know what I mean? You're wasting energy, but you're not wasting any energy sitting in a car. Anyway, we'll see when we get there. Changed. Increased vehicle damage from entity collision. Remove vehicle parents, vehicles that are supposed to be on blocks. Okay, that's just changes. Controls break when hitting at the same time you enter a vehicle. Okay. Server administration. This means nothing to me. I don't know much about servers, so I will pause it here. You guys can get through this, and this will probably 
get your rocks all excited, you know, like with, uh, with excitement. I guess that's, that's yeah, excitement. <laughs> you know, for people who like um, uh, looking after servers or administer servers. So this is all the new changes there. Modding support. In-game, localization for mods now pushes to clients. Um, again, for the modders, this probably means a lot more and server admins than it means to me. So feel free to pause it here and um, have a quick look at it. And then we move on to the level editor improvements. Actually, level editor, add it, add it. Editor only commands sleep, sleeper reset to reset sleeper volumes for quicker testing without reloading levels. Hmm, okay. Disable biome spawns in playtest mode. Oh, there's a playtest mode? I like it. Added screamers will not spawn in playtest mode. Light editor max range. Oh, that's the level editor improvements. Yeah, sorry, I thought it was the, the, the map editor as in when you create a random world. Yeah, that means uh, much more to people who actually use that. I don't know what that is about, so just have a go through it. Pause the video and check it all out. UI improvements. Map pop-up for creating waypoints can now be dismissed by clicking on the map. Added UI scaling option, added a refresh. Oh, scaling option, I like it. Added a refresh button to, serve to the server browser. I wonder if the scaling option is all or nothing or that you can open, I don't know, some games have it that you're saying you want to scale the UI. And then when you're in that mode, you can scale independent UI parts. So say I would be really happy to see certain things much bigger on the screen, but really happy to see other things much smaller. So it's probably, if it's the first thing they implement, it might be an all or nothing, but I, I like that they have it in the first place, which is really, really good. Added a refresh button to the server browser, added support to paste IP port combinations, okay. Added a warning on the new game window when the selected world has created with a different major version of the game. Scoreboard admins, the last letters on some tools were below, okay, yeah, that's fine. Fog of War covered parts of the map and were transparent, quite a bunch of missing localizations, very good. All new weapons have supported audio. Do weapons still go out of sync? When you had a gun and you shoot it really, really fast, not auto hold the mouse, but click, 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 it could end up going out of sync, the sound and the animation of the of the weapon. We have partnered with Super Nimbus and Game Sparks, analytics and tele te te tele telemetry. telemetry. Um, we have partnered with Super Nimbus and Game Sparks to capture game analytics from Alpha 19 to Gold. We plan on capturing many things to help balance uh, the game and improve the overall experience. So what will be captured? Game simulation settings, uh, how XP is earned, how players die, how players kill enemies, the speed of player leveling, loot progression at key points. What we're not capturing, IP addresses, name, Steam username, device. Yeah, I'm in favor of all that. I um, Is it a setting? Because I'm also in favor of people being able to turn it off that feel uncomfortable with this. But um, it shouldn't be a mandatory thing. But at least I, I, I personally agree with these things. I think they're very important if we consistently see people playing a game and reaching within two hours end game that obviously would be awful you know then you need to balance something so alpha 19 b1 to b151 added buff icons i'm not going to go through all this list so for alpha 19 the first version i suppose it's coming out intersecting block shapes oh my god oh my god i'm really excited for that intersection block shapes i like it Okay, I'm gonna read some of it. Added a critical hits journal entry. Ooh, I like it. Block shapes that play nice with the new counter, mounted sync mesh, entity physics rig body used the block model. I'm interested with all the block things. Will we now have shapes for every single block that has shapes for all the same block types? That would just be absolutely amazing. Hot zones, dimming of sun and moon, new polished hardwood floors. New polished hardwood, again, you can pause it and read all of the items at your own pace. Because it will allow hay bales to scrub to plant fiber, nice. Set transform active updates reflect pop means nothing to me. Um, changed. Okay, this is all game stage specific changes, primitive item drops. Okay. Perk healing factor, update bullet. Again, you can pause this and go through it in much more detail and at your own leisure, of course. So you're just gonna go in steps through it. Oh, backpacks have a chance to disappear. Improved logging, show ID, play ID, move to enter the load. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, book, schematic, and recipes show the separate mods tab. Oh, I love it. That is actually really, really nice. Turret camera, view to normal color is a little static. That is lovely. Rename water jars for consistency. Um, spreading and tending off horizon light. Updated pine snow desert, burnt forest, and wasteland spectrums. Okay. So there's a lot of ambient stuff as well. And they updated a lot of graphics. So, yeah, you guys can pause this. Go through the whole list. Blunderbusses do not auto reload. Okay. 
Range weapons, auto reload, property effect, one shot, weapon reload. Okay, this is a lot, a lot, a lot. So again, pause it and then go through it for yourself. And fixed, probably the same thing. I'm just gonna leave it here on the screen. And of course, I'm gonna leave a link to the official release notes as well in the description. And I think that's it. Let me just uh, scroll through it a little bit so you guys can always have a little pause and go through it. I'm gonna go through a lot of these items myself afterwards as well in more detail. And reinforce wood. Oh, wow, there is so many. And commands, okay, network commands. Screenshots are saved as TGA when pressing left shift F9. Oh, okay. Teleport to POI window triggered by console command TPPPOI. Okay. Visuals, cloud moon glow, darkening at lower heights. All right. Sun punch through a fog. Color spectrum underwater fog. This is awesome. And this is the end of the list. Guys, this probably will be nearly, uh, what, 45, what is it? 30, 45, about a 50 minute video. But I think it's absolutely fantastic how much work went into Alpha 19. I'm glad that the functional changes, that there is functional changes overall. I'm really happy that um, they're not overpowered in the sense that loads and loads changed. I think enough changed that you can say it is a good amount of changes, but also not too many that things get confusing with balancing um, if they have to balance them. So I think all the changes are very well thought out and you can see what they're trying to do with them. However, we will know only once we see them in practice. And let me know in the comments below, guys, what you think of the changes, which ones by the sound of it, are you looking forward to most? Which ones do you think are going to be the sketchiest where you think, hmm, I don't think this is going to work. This will definitely need rebalancing. Or which ones you're just the most excited about in general. Let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys had a good time with this episode. If you did, remember to kick that like button in the balls. And I hope I see you guys in the next video and as well in the stream on Friday, which probably will be at five o'clock in the morning for me Saturday, you know, for Alpha, uh, Alpha 19 messing around. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and see you guys next time. Until then, as always, viel Spaß and happy gaming.